the daiquiri. Hey guys, Pastor Wade here, welcome home. So glad you're here today. By the time you see this, our team of 53 will be boots on the ground in Kenya, serving alongside of those at New Hope Initiative, loving on the kids and parents of the second largest slum in East Africa. We're gonna be sharing the gospel, discipleship relationships, running a sports camp. Pray for us, I'll be praying for you as you round out our series called Recovering Identity. And today you're gonna to cover the topic of biblical manhood and you're in for a treat. My good friend, Les Steckel is gonna be with you and Les is the president and CEO of Fellowship of Christian Athletes. He's a former head coach of the Minnesota Vikings. He was on the coaching staff of the New England Patriots when they won their Super Bowl. Now, don't hold that against him. I don't know how many Patriot fans we have, but he was also on the coaching staff of the Tennessee Titans when they went to the Super Bowl. So that I know will fire some of you up. But Les loves Jesus. He understands men, knows what makes us tick, but also knows what it means to follow Jesus. So I want you to give a really warm but rowdy welcome to my friend, Les Steckel. excited you guys have a great church I mean you really do yes you do uh, I, I see the passion the excitement the enthusiasm and uh, I have to tell you and I'm saying this from the bottom of my heart I spent time with Pastor Owens and Wade has a real heart for this church for you individually for your families and for this community uh, I have to tell you, he's made a real impression on me, and uh, I just wanted to say that before we get started. Uh, I know someone here that uh, goes to the church, and he sent me an email, and uh, without a doubt, I want to be able to uh, <laughs> read this email to you. He asked me to read it, so it goes like this. Our pastor, Wade Owens, was visiting an elderly woman, a church member in a nursing home recently. He noticed a bowl of peanuts by her bed and took one. As they talked and passed the time, he couldn't help himself, and he ate one right after the other. By the time their visit was over, the bowl was empty. And the pastor said, I'm sorry, but I seem to have eaten all of your peanuts. And she replied, oh, that's okay. They would have gone stale anyway. Without my teeth, all I could do is suck off the chocolate. <laughs> ah, look. That's, that's bad. Let's go to the Lord in prayer, okay? Father, we just come to you this morning knowing you are the God of the glory. Speak through me, Lord. Use me as a messenger. It's not about me. It's about you. Lord, my prayer today is that we slow down and reflect on who you are, how great a God you are, how you love us, how you have a plan for us, and how you know us, and how you call us to be obedient to your word, how you reward us when we are honored, you. I pray that as our lives go forward, we would honor you and bring you the glory. And we pray this prayer in the precious and powerful name of Jesus Christ. And all God's people said, amen. 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 Boy, we got a packed house, standing room only. I'm loving it. Well, let me ask you, um, some of you I know came up and said, really, you played football? Uh, you were running back? Well, um, I was. I, I was this hotshot running back out of Pennsylvania, and I got recruited to go all the way out to Kansas University. The chancellor and the president of Kansas at the time was from my hometown, so that's how I ended up going out there. So let me ask you, ha have you ever heard of Gail Sayers, the Kansas Comet Hall of Fame running back with the Chicago Bears? How many? You, have you heard, you've heard of Gail Sayers? And uh, have you ever heard of John Riggins, uh, Centralia, Kansas, Hall of Fame running back with the Redskins. Have, have you heard of him? Yeah. That's why you never heard of me. <laughs> Can you imagine being on a football team with those two guys? 
Are you kidding me? Oh, my goodness. I can hear the coach right now. Steckel, you're the slowest running back I ever coached. If you got in a race with a pregnant woman, you'd come in third. <laughs> okay. I give the good old days. So my question is to me and to you is what is that I can say in the next few minutes that's going to make a difference in your life? There was a great philosopher named Confucius, and here's what he said. He said, I hear and I forget. I see, I remember, I do, and I understand. When I was president of the Fellowship of Christian Athletes for 12 years, we had a communication school. And we brought in experts to talk to our staff. And we learned one thing, I did at least, that when people speak to audiences after 48 hours, you will remember only one thing. I'm not sure what that one thing's going to be today, but I just want you to know that I'm excited about someone who I've been praying for for the last many weeks when I was asked to speak who's going to come to know Jesus in a very personal, intimate way. I don't know who that is, but I'm confident God will honor my prayers over the past several days. I know I got this job simply because Mike Glenn, the senior pastor at Brentwood Baptist, recommended me. Mike Glenn guilt-tripped me to write this book called One Yard Short, Turning Your Defeats into Victories. Anybody remember that game? I'm still going to counseling over it. It's been 22 years. Oh, my goodness gracious. Well, I'm going to speak on biblical manhood. And today, fellas, it's going to be a spiritual checkup, kind of like when you go see the doctor for your physical checkup. So I'm asking you to tighten your seatbelts. As a coach, as a colonel in the United States Marine Corps that wasn't mentioned, I spent 30 years in the Marine Corps, and I retired as a colonel. After Vietnam as an infantry officer, I spent 27 years in the reserves. As a CEO, I know this. You're challenged every day when you're called to be a leader. And as a leader, I think you need to ask your question, this question because I haven't asked myself this question until the last several years. What is your legacy going to be? What's it going to be? Have you ever stopped and thought about that? Well, I'm challenging you to make a Christian impact right where you are, in your home, at work, with coworkers, with your family, with friends, in your community. What kind of Christian impact are you making? To do what? to advance the gospel, not just come to church on Sunday. Don't be satisfied with just that. Men, I got to tell you, where I've been in my life, there are a lot of men out there using God to promote their careers. I found myself, after my brokenness of 1990, I used my career to promote God. There's a difference. Oh, yeah, I was labeled a religious radical in the NFL. That's okay. My wife said it was the greatest compliment I could ever receive. Winston Churchill, prime minister of Great Britain, back during World War II, he said this, inspirational speech. Never give up. Never give up. Never give up. And he went over and he sat down. So I don't know what you're going to remember after 48 hours, but I hope you never remember, you never forget this. Totally surrender your life to Jesus Christ. Totally surrender your life to Jesus Christ. Totally surrender your life to Jesus Christ. 
you will be amazed what kind of God game plan he has for you. There was a great book, it was a classic bestseller called A Road Less Traveled by Scott Peck. And the first sentence in the book said, life is difficult. You see it, I see it. Our world's in turmoil. You see it and I see it. We know individuals are in turmoil. They're out of balance. What? Marital problems? Divorce rate in our country? Financial stress? Inflation right now? Depression? Mental health? Addictions? Anger? Oh my goodness. But I have to tell you, Jesus has a road for you and I. And it's going to be exciting when you come to know him personally. You see, men, I was just like so many others before 1990. I was this AAA personality going 110 miles an hour in the far left lane. I was going full speed. I was a driven man. Can I paint another picture for you? When I coached with the Minnesota Vikings in the late 70s and early 80s, it was an old baseball field, the Met. We were on this sideline, and our opponents were right, just right across from us. That's how far back it went. And we would play outdoors, and in December late on a Sunday night game, after the game was over, I left the locker room, and I went back up into the stadium, and as I stood on top, I said to myself, this stadium right now represents my inner soul. It was cold, it was dark, and it was empty. That's where I was prior to 1990. As I share with you today, I'm talking to you, men, and wives are nodding their heads from time to time on the last service, but I'm talking to me too. I used to challenge players all the time. When I had a challenge and a conflict, and I would call them in and I would say, I'm going to tell you something and you're going to interpret it one of two ways. Either I'm a jerk or I really care about you. Just like this man sitting right here, Chris Sanders, who played for me at the Titans. When he caught touchdown passes, he dropped to his knees and pointed to the sky and he meant it because it was serious. And Chris knows the subject I'm talking to him about. He said he wanted to come and hear me talk today. I hope you choose the latter, that I care and that I'm not a jerk. But man, I know this, in your world and in mine, we deal with conflicts, confrontations, circumstances that are out of control, and yes, it creates confusion, and then confusion comes along, and we have no vision, and we think things are going out of control. But Jesus has a road less traveled. It says in Matthew 7, 14, how narrow is the gate and difficult, the road that leads to life, and few men find it. Speaking of few men, I spent 30 years in the Marine Corps, as I mentioned. Any jarheads in the room? If you are, please stand. Jarheads, stand. 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 <laughs> Time's up. You know that commercial. We're just looking for a few. In 1972, I went to my first Fellowship of Christian Athletes camp. <clears throat> there was a gentleman named Bill Yeoman, a very successful coach, and he spoke about Luke 2.52, where a man to be balanced and live a good life needs to be strong spiritually, mentally, physically, socially. And as he was talking, I kept saying to myself as a young coach, my first year in coaching in 72, I said, I'm going to take that and run with it. And it impacted my life. Strong biblical man, hmm, I have to tell you. This is a great picture I brought from my garage this morning. 
See these four legs? Spiritual, mental, physical, social. Living what? A balanced life. You take one of those legs and knock it off, and guess what happens? You're out of balance. You ever think about that, men? So today, talking about biblical manhood, we're going to talk about four pillars that maybe lead to your balanced life. They're both divine and they're human. For us men, it's human and at times unbalanced. In Christ, it was majestically merged. Majestically merged. And he became the ultimate. The one we should worship. Every day we as Christians, and men you know it, and I'm going to tell you, every day you battle one thing for sure. Pride versus humility. We strive to be successful. We try to be significant. What do we do? We, we want higher positions. We want more popularity. We want more possessions. We want more prominence. Really? I can remember Roger Staubach in an FCA camp, and uh, he and I were playing basketball, and he ran over to pick up his Bible. For you ladies, Roger Staubach was the Heisman Trophy winner at the U.S. Naval Academy, future Hall of Fame quarterback for the Dallas Cowboys. And he picked up his Bible and he came and he said, hey, Les, remember this. This book right here, Pat and his Bible, is diametrically opposed to what the world says we're to do. Why did I for not remember that? Or better yet, not forget that? Because Roger Staubach said it. And it's true. If you've read the Bible, which I've, I've done several times, it tells you just what God wants you to do. It tells you not what the world wants you to do. Fellas, we desire to be valued, have self-worth, and certainly be respected. But sometimes I really believe, if you would admit, you feel like you're spinning slowly out of control. And when you do, what happens? Well, I'm going to talk to you about four pillars that can hold you up. The first pillar is spiritual leader. The spiritual leader of your home. Without a doubt, <clears throat> I find this to be uh, reflecting righteous energy, uh, being a wise decision maker, being, having pure moral values, having strong convictions. Uh, a guy gets called in and he, he knows he's being told he's got to cheat on this business deal. What does he do? He resigns. I've been there. I know. He stands up for his friend when he's out of control. He doesn't waver. He's unflappable. He lives the truth. He does what's right. It's critical when you're a Christian and people know that. And folks, I'm going to tell you, life is a full contact sport. I'm sure you would agree. It says in Ephesians chapter 6, I want to read, you read this, and I'm just going to give you an abbreviation. Charles Stanley, the great pastor down in Atlanta, Georgia, in touch ministry, he said to me, he said, Coach, if you don't put on the armor of Christ every day when you get out of the rack, as we call it in the Marine Corps, and your foot hit the deck, he said, make sure you put on the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the belt of truth, the sandals of a peacemaker, the shield of faith, and the sword of the spirit. If you don't do that every day, you're going to get your tail kicked. You ever hear anybody tell you that? Try it. You go into battle each and every day. We're called to lead, we're called to coach, and yes, we're called to be a drill instructor sometimes. And as a parent, I'm blessed with three adult children and seven grandchildren. And you know what? The greatest gift I could have ever given my wife and I. You know what the greatest gift we could ever give them? Jesus. That's what. Not something you can buy at Macy's. Ain't no doubt about it. My wife and I had a theme for 48 years. Values are caught, not taught. Well, the second pillar is a warrior who has conquering energy. 
who provides, who protects, who perseveres. Helen Keller, anybody ever hear of her? Helen Keller, the only person who was blind and deaf and graduated from college, and matter of fact, graduated with honors. And she was asked, is there anything worse than blindness? She said, oh yeah, a person with sight and no vision. When I think of a warrior, I think of actions and emotions. I think of strong and bold and courageous. I think of heart. You know, there's two major emotions that we all have. The heart, which is positive, and the mind, which can be negative and fearful, without a doubt. Love from the heart, fear from the mind. We all remember Uvalta. We've heard about it. Standing in the hallway for 77 minutes, you should have seen the Marines in action in Vietnam. The infantry, I can tell you right now, there was no standing around. Men, you know this too. There's a stronghold in our lives. The secular world and its values, our self-centeredness, and Satan come after us. And you know what we do? We overwork. We overeat. We overspend. Uh, pride and lust and greed creep in. And then people go to alcohol and drugs and gambling. Something to make us feel good. Just for a moment. You know, I can remember in critical football games, calling plays for a lot of teams, college and pros, as an offensive coordinator. And I would take a snicker bar up in the lo- uh, press box, Chris, and you didn't know this, and I would chop the snicker bars up into little bites. And every time we'd score a touchdown or a field goal, I'd reward myself because I felt the pressure of the games. Unbelievable. Just little things. That's better than other things. There's one thing you need to know, though. We're prisoners of our past, and there's freedom in Christ. Galatians 6.14 says this, For me, God forbid that I should boast about anything except the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because of that cross, my interest in all the attractive things of the world was killed long ago, and the world's interest in me is also long dead. Now, why do I show that verse? Because each and every day, fellas, as I say to myself, I'm one step from stupid. I think men are. But you know what we should do? We should be like that Marine shows up, puts his heels together, his thumbs along the seam of the trousers. He looks straight ahead fixed and says, sir, reporting for duty, sir. That's the Christian life that I picture we should all live as men. It's been motivating to me for a long time. The next two pillars are going to be tough. They're very hard to obtain, but guess what you have to do? You have to work at it. You have to be intentional. The third pillar is a lover. Hey, fellas, it's about romantic energy. That's why she married you. Let me give you a picture. Um, How about being sensitive and tender and and being open with your communication? Yeah, uh, hard for an NFL coach to say, but yeah, we did it. Uh, We'd slam the computer. We'd close the door. We'd get in our car. We'd drive to the store. We'd buy flowers. We'd walk in the door, and we'd say, babe, I've already arranged for a babysitter, and you and I are going to this restaurant for dinner, and here's some flowers. And I do that probably once a week, right? At least, right? Yeah, right. (laughs) Oh, my goodness. By the way, this is my wife, Chris, of 48 years. But I don't clap too loud, because she just told me if I want to make it to 50, I got to sign a two-year contract. And I told her the last contract I signed, I gave you unlimited expense account. And what did she do? She exceeded that. (laughs) 
But she said, her people will call my people soon. We'll talk about it. <laughs> Dads, can I tell you something? You want to make a difference in your kids' lives? Let me give you three A's to remember. Every young person is screaming. All you got to do is walk out these doors for attention, for affirmation, and affection. Affection. If you don't take opportunities to hold your daughter's hand when you're at the mall or you're walking across a parking lot, I don't care how old she is, guess what? You don't put your arm around her, somebody else will. Who is that person? As Chris knows, our motto has always been, values are caught, not taught. And together we win. That fourth pillar, to build a foundation that will be solid and not collapse, it's called a friend. Many men <clears throat> do not have friends. After the service, two men came over, and I said, what's the one thing that you're going to remember? And they both said, I don't have any friends. Men are so busy working that someday, as I hear, now that I'm in retirement, and I go to the YMCA and work out, and I hear guys say, this retirement didn't cut out. What, what, what do you mean by that? I don't have a community. I don't have any friends. I, you know, I used to go to work today every day. I'd be, nobody calls me. Nobody. It's unbelievable. To be a biblical man, you've got to create relationships. A friend who needs someone is a friend who will talk to you and better yet listen to you and better yet invest in you and better yet support you and better yet tell you what you need to hear. You got anybody like that? So when the wheels in your life start to wobble, who can you call at 4 o'clock in the morning before you crash? I got two. I got two. How fortunate I am. Men need men who will speak to them with biblical wisdom. Cheer for them in success. Encourage them when they fall. Call them out when they need to be called out. We've all heard the term, it's lonely at the top. I've been a head coach. I've been an offensive coordinator. I've been a CEO. I've been a colonel in the Marine Corps. That's at the top. But let me tell you who's really lonely at the top. Senior pastors. My two best friends are senior pastors. One's retired. One's still preaching. We've been talking once every two to three weeks since 1979 in the Minnesota Viking pastor and 1985 the New England pastor. I'm not saying your pastor's lonely. We had a great conversation for over two hours. He never said that. But I'm a part of a ministry. My wife and I are on the National Board of Trustees of Standing Stone Ministries. And you know who we minister to? Ministers. We hear scores and scores and scores of stories. You would never believe. You want to know why a pastor's so lonely? Here, let me tell you. You see this? His back, it's got a big bullseye on it. And Satan comes after him every day. I was in the ministry for 12 years. That's a true comment. Well, friend. I call my wife my best friend. And one of my Marine buddies said, hey, Preppy. We, my Marine buddies nicknamed her Preppy when we all got back from Vietnam. She went to Cal Berkeley, Right? She used to say, you know, well, uh, I said, you used to have tanks on your campus. You know, at least I had tanks in Vietnam with me, but come on. So they called her Preppy. So they said, you know, you always say Preppy's your best friend. So try this on for size, coach. Take your dog and take your wife and stick her in a, your car trunk and lock the, lock the trunk for half an hour. And then go back and open it up and let's find out who missed you the most, and who's your best friend. <laughs> so I stopped saying she's my best friend, but you're still my best friend. Hey, we know this. 
There's four directions in this world, north, south, east, and west. And there's four elements of the earth. There's the earth, the wind, and fire, and water. And there's four seasons of life. Winter, fall, summer, and spring. And if you want to be a biblical man, there's four pillars to keep your foundation solid and not collapse and not go out of balance. It's a spiritual leader. It's a warrior. It's a lover. And it's a friend. The most depressing thing that I ever learned was when I was a kid growing up in Pennsylvania in a blue-collar neighborhood where nobody even knew what college meant. Everybody worked at the steel mills and the cement mills. That's all the dads did. And these guys would grab me, and I tell you, I'll never forget it. It's motivated me my whole life. They'd grab me like this. Hey, kid, come here. Come here, sit down. And they'd put me on a bar stool right next to a guy drinking whiskey and beer, smoke everywhere. It was terrible. And here's what they said. Time after time as they grabbed us like this. Hey, kid, if I had it to do over again, this is what I would do. The most depressing thing I ever heard. So I leave you with this thought. Totally surrender your life to Jesus Christ.